Hey everyone, it's Tracy and welcome to the next installment in my series about editable text effects in the Affinity Suite. In this one, we're going to create a wood burn effect in designer that's fully editable so that you can change the font, its size, the text itself, and the textures you're using, and the effects will remain intact. Now I'm using version two of the desktop app, but the process is the same for the iPad version, so you can easily follow along as long as you know where the tools are located. So let's get started. I've created a 3000 pixel square document and I've set my DPI to 300, just in case I plan to print this at some point. I can always export it at a smaller size if I want. If you don't plan to print yours, you can set your DPI to 72 and that will work just fine. In fact, it creates a smaller file size. We're going to start by setting the background and I'm going to pull some wood texture in from the stock studio. But instead of dragging it in, I'm going to use my fill tool to add it. Before I do that though, I want to select the rectangle tool and I'm going to command click on my canvas and create a rectangle that's going to cover the entire canvas. Now this option is available on the desktop version, but it's not available on the iPad version, but you can drag out a rectangle to cover your canvas. So I'm just going to center this up. I'll go to my stock studio and I'm going to type in wood and there's one in pixels that I like, particularly this one by FW Studio. So with that layer selected, I'll go to my fill tool and I'll click on that image and that's automatically going to fill the rectangle with that wood texture. Now, the reason I'm using the fill tool instead of dragging the image in is because this allows me to easily swap out the texture. The handles allow me to scale it up or move it around. I just have more flexibility doing it this way. So next up, we wanna add the text. For my text, I'm going to use the same fill as the background, so this wood texture. Again, I'm doing it for the same reason that I did the background. I want my text editable, but I want to be able to easily swap it out, scale it up and down, move it around. I'm not going to be converting the text to a curve because that would mean it's no longer editable. And the fill tool is going to allow me to make all those changes without having to worry about that. So I'm going to grab my artistic text tool and start dragging out a letter. I'll change my font. I want something a little bit thicker, so I'm going to use impact. You can use any font that you'd like. Even thinner fonts work with this. It just means adjusting your effects. So I'll just type out wood burn effect. And I think I'll size this up a bit and then center it up. Now, obviously this has a black fill and I want it to be the same fill as my background. So I'm going to select my text layer, go to my fill tool and back to the stock studio. And again, I'll just click on that image. And you can see it's slightly offset. You'll see a seam right there. For this particular effect, I actually want to line up the texture of the text and the background. And the reason for that is because of areas like this one where it has a knot or the grain is very strong. If I were actually burning a piece of wood, anything like this is going to continue to show up as I burn down. So lining up my text on my background is just going to help the effect. So I'll use these handles. I'm going to hold shift down to keep them where they're at and to start dragging out. And if you watch the knot here, it's going to snap into place. So I'll just start dragging up and it just pops into place. And now my text is completely invisible because it's lined up with the background. But if I go to my layers, you can see it's right there. At this point, I'm ready to add my non-destructive effects. So I'll select my text layer and go to my FX studio. And the very first one that I want to add is inner shadow. Now, whenever you're adding a shadow, before you add anything, you want to think about where you want your light source to come from. So in this case, I want it to seem as if my light is coming from the left side. So all of my shadows will fall to the right. I'll go ahead and turn on inner shadow and I'm going to begin dragging the offset out pretty far. Like I think I'll just key in 45. And then I'm going to change my radius to something a little bit higher. Let's try 50. That's going to feather it out. And I'm going to bring the intensity up just a bit. I'm probably going to have to change this once I do some further effects, but this again is all non-destructive so I can easily do that. I'm also going to bring the opacity up just a touch. 
And one final change that I want to make is I want to change this from pure black to a brown that I sample from here. It's going to give it a more realistic look because if you actually have a shadow on something that's brown, the shadow is going to have brown tones to it. So I'll go ahead and keep tap on this color picker, grab the actual color picker, and then pick a brown color somewhere in here. I'll click the color dot. Now that's obviously too light, but I have my HSL sliders up here. So I'm just going to drag the luminosity down. It's still going to be a dark color, but again, the tone is going to be brown rather than pure black. So it's just going to look a little bit more organic. And I may bring the saturation up just a bit. So my inner shadow is done. The next thing that I want to do is add an inner glow. Again, if I were actually burning wood, the shadow would sit here, but the outline wouldn't stop there. There would be a slight outline where it's burned. So we're going to use inner glow to do that. I'll turn on inner glow and then click to get its options. Now by default, the blend mode is screen and the color is white. We're actually going to change the blend mode to multiply and again, pick one of the brown colors on the inside here. So I'll just sample something maybe in the darker area here. I'll click on that and I'm going to start by bringing the radius up. I can always change the color to something darker. That's a little too light. So I'm going to go back into my color picker here and just bring that down a bit. I don't want this to be as feathered as the shadow, but it still should show up. And I might bring the opacity down just a touch. Make sure that yours is set to edge and not center. Otherwise it's going to do that. So you want to keep it along the very edge of the letters. So this is good right now. Again, I can always come back in and adjust it if I need to. The next effect that I want to add is a bit of a highlight along the left edge of all the letters. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see what happens here. I'll use the bevel emboss for this. So I'll click it and then go into the options. It's automatically going to add a pillow emboss, which you can see here, but I actually want this to be outer. I want it to sit on top of the background texture. So I'll change my type to outer. And you can see the shadow, or I'm sorry, the highlight is over here on the left side, which is incorrect because my shadow is here. I want it to be on the left side of all of my letters here. So I could either drag this dot or I can click invert. Now that actually landed right where I want it. I wanted the highlight to be here on the left side and maybe a little bit over the top here. You can see it on the O. I'm just going to drag the radius out a bit just to make it a little bit more intense and I'll just soften it up. Okay, so I have a highlight, I have my inner shadow and I have the singe created with the inner glow. One final non-destructive effect I want to add here is an outer glow. What we're going to use that for is to create sort of a singe around the outer edge of our letters because no matter how much you protect the wood when you're either burning it with a laser or something else, you're going to get a bit of a singe on the outside. So I'm going to click into Outer Glow, and again, go to its options. Again, the blend mode is screen and the color is white. We are going to use a lighter color, but we're going to change the blend mode to color burn in this case. I'm just gonna zoom in here again. For the color, I'll just pick a color on the outside here. And I think I'll go right there. I can always change this. I'll just start bringing my radius up. And as I do that, you'll start to see that effect on the outer edge of my letters. Now that's a little bit too saturated. It's also a little too intense. So I'm gonna back that up and I'll bring the saturation down a touch. You can also try linear burn to see how that looks. Let's just bring the radius up on that now. I think I might actually like linear burn better than I do color burn. So I'm gonna stick with that. Again, I can always change it if I want. I'm just gonna bring the opacity down just a touch. Okay, so if I were actually burning wood. The wood on the inside would not be the same color as the wood on the outside. So one final effect that I want to add that's not part of the effects studio is to select my text layer and I'm going to change the blend mode to multiply. That's going to darken up the letters so it gives more of an appearance of being burnt. Depending on the type of wood that you use, 
if you find changing it to multiply darkens it too much, you can always go back into your FX studio and add a color overlay on soft light just to lighten it up a bit. The whole point is you just want to have this have a nice warm tone that's darker than the wood on the outside. One final effect that I want to add, which is totally optional, is to break up the perfect lines, the edges of the letters. If you were actually burning wood, there would be a little bit of a jagged line along the edges. It wouldn't be so perfect, even if you were using a laser. So I'm going to do this with a textured stroke. I'll grab my text tool and I want to change this stroke to the same texture that's on the background and in my letters. So first I'll go to my stroke studio because there's a couple of things that I want to change first. I want to make sure that scale with object is on, which actually reminds me of something I didn't mention. I want to go back into my layer effects. Always make sure scale with object is on there as well. As you size up and down, you want to make sure that the effects scale with it. All right, so back to the stroke studio. I want to make sure a line is aligned to center. If you have it aligned to the inside, it's not going to have any impact to the outer edge of the letters. You could also do a line to outside. I just find it's a little bit too much. So I stick to the align to center. With my text layer selected, I'm going to select the fill tool and I want to change the context from fill to stroke. For those of you on the iPad version, you'll see a solid dot, which is the fill and a donut, which is the line or stroke context. It's right next to where you choose the type of fill and that's the one that you want. So I'm going to go back to my stock studio with that selected and again, click on that image. Now you're not going to see anything happen because right now the stroke is really low. I'm going to head to my brushes and I want to use a brush in the Bezier Buddy brush set by True Grit Texture Supply. You can use any brush you'd like. You can experiment with the ones that are built in or those that you have to import. This is one that I just go to all the time and I've linked it below in case you want to take a look at it. So I'm going to head down to this rough fine mono. And when I change this, it's automatically going to change the stroke size. And this is way too much. It's changed it to 50 pixels here. So I'm going to go back to my stroke studio and just bring this down. I just want to break up the edges just a bit. And if you watch the side of the O here, you can see what I'm talking about. So just bring that down to about 15. If I turn the stroke off, you can see it goes back to looking really perfect. If I turn it back on, it breaks up the edges a little bit and it just has a more authentic wood burn feel. And because I've filled my layers with the fill tool, I can use the fill tool to easily swap out any of these textures in both the background and the text. So I'll select my text with the move tool and go to the stock studio. I want to make sure that my fill tool is selected and I'll just pick this wood texture right here. And you can see it's automatically changed it. I can do the same thing with my background. Now, if you change your texture and you find that you need to make adjustments to your settings, remember these are all non-destructive. So you can just go back in and make changes to your radius, to the colors you chose, to the depth of your effects. Any of these are adjustable because they're all non-destructive. Now, in addition to changing the texture, because we left the text layer editable, we can also change the text. So I'm going to select the layer, select my artistic text tool, and I can change this to anything I want. I can also select it and go back up to my fonts and pick something else. Now, this is a thinner font. So again, if you need to, if the effects are a little too strong for the, if the font that you chose, you can go back into your effects and make any changes that you want to, because again, they're all non-destructive. Let's talk about saving an editable file. So if you want to maintain your layers and effects and texture, as well as your layer history, in other words, every version of this within this file up to the history number you have selected in your preferences, you can save as an AF design file. I'm actually going to save mine as a template file instead. The reason that I'm doing that is because I really like this design and want to be able to use it in the future. So I want to maintain my layers, my effects and my texture, but I don't need the history. What saving a template is going to allow me to do is go up here to file and new and select templates. And I have this particular file set into a cloud file so that I can access it from anywhere. 
These are some of the text effects that I've created. And here's one that I created previously for the wood burn effect. If I select this and choose create, it's going to give me a clean copy. In other words, this original is still safe and sound in the templates. I can make any changes that I want to this and save it as an entirely new design without impacting the one that's saved in the templates. To save a template, go up to File and down to Export as Template. From there, it's going to work exactly the same way that it does when you're saving a file. You'll put it into whatever location you want to keep it and give it a name. An additional benefit of using templates is that I have them at my fingertips in both the desktop and iPad versions, as well as every app within the Affinity Suite. So again, I have these within a cloud file that I've called TextFX. And whenever I want to access one of them, I can simply go to that templates file and I can pull that into both the desktop and the iPad so I always have access to them. So tell me what text effects would you like to see as part of the series? Can you see yourself using these editable text effects for your own designs? Let me know in the comments below. And please don't hesitate to ask if you have any questions. Again, just let me know below. If you've enjoyed my teaching style and would like to watch my full length classes where I share more detail on many of the tools that I show in my tutorials here, I've linked both my Skillshare classes as well as my own learning site, The Creator Collage, below. I have lots more tutorials coming, so be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, you might want to check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.